All right, wait till you guys see what I done did. Got some news for you right after this. You know me, putting in work at the shop, getting ready to get out of here after another 14 hour day. But uh, just wanted to shoot a quick one real quick. Had a couple guys ask me, uh, they wanted to see uh, you know, a motor build on the channel. So just a heads up, knowing me, I, I bought another car. Um, you guys follow the channel, I'm pretty sure you guys know about the bunch I already have on the side of the building, the side of the shop. We'll get around to them. We'll get around to them. We're looking at a ton of snow this weekend, so you know everything's just dragging back. You know, move slow during the winter time. It's freezing out there. But uh, got that 03 Ford Focus. Got that Pathfinder. We got that uh, that Cummings, that diesel, that uh, the Rust Belt's coming to pick up. Speaking of, Rust Belt's going to be out here this weekend. You guys, don't forget to tune into the live stream. Me and him, uh, January 19th at about four o'clock Central Time. Uh, talking about the pros and cons between, you know, independent shop life, working at an independent or working for independent guys, you know, auto shop guys or working at the dealership and things like that. There's obviously more beyond that. You could work at the big chains and things like that. But the two, you know, those are two of my favorites. The dealership I enjoyed working for and obviously independent was my next one. I didn't really dig too much working for the big chains like the Midas, Meineke, Firestones and all that stuff. I worked at Goodyear. But, uh... Make sure you guys tune in. Make sure you're there. It should be fun. It should be pretty cool. We got some pretty cool news to drop and all that stuff. So you guys tune in. My old saying, be there, be square. So, um, but, uh, so what I did is I had a customer came in, 2010 Equinox. <laughs> another, uh, another Equinox. These things with the 2.4, the notorious, terrible design GM motors that have the oil train issue, you know, oil problems, all that stuff. Well, this one, Still runs, 2010, it's got about 180. The customer says it's been, uh, the motor's been done at the dealership at some point, 90,000 or something like that. But uh, I was waiting to hear back from her, seeing if she wanted to do, you know, what she wanted to do, whether she wanted to rebuild what she had or, you know, a junkyard motor, or a crate motor, you know, getting into a crate motor, obviously for these things, it gets expensive. Those crate motors aren't cheap, you know, especially, especially knowing that they probably sell a lot of them because these motors are terrible. They go out like crazy. But she declined to work. She said she wanted to junk it. I, of course, purchased it all. You know, I made her an offer. Um, got it for like 200, 250 bucks. I mean, whatever. We'll show you guys here in a minute what it looks like. But if you guys remember, about a month, month and a half ago, we did that 2012 Equinox. We did the motor on for the customer. The junkyard motor had 60,000 miles. I still have that motor sitting on the shop floor. So I'm thinking maybe... Uh, Thinking maybe we'll break this thing down, and from what I remember, it had no compression. I believe the timing's on it. Here, let me show you guys. So here it is, still sitting here. But from what I remember, when we uh, did a compression test on this one, she had no compression. And I'm guessing, I'm guessing the timing chain, uh, or the, you know, it gave out. I'm hoping the valves didn't hit the pistons, but what we're going to do is probably rebuild this sucker. Pull the head off, check timing, check the valves. Check the pistons, see if there's any damage on the pistons. Get this one nice and rebuilt, you know, all, any kind of various gaskets and things like that. Do a rebuild on this one. And then, uh, here she is. Throw it in this one. 2010, got bad fender on there. Maybe we'll get a fender for it. We'll see what these things are going for. Make a quick flip on this one. But there it is in all its glory with the Taylor Bill motor in it. Let's get the hood popped. Should I dare open it? Uh, uh, ah. But there it is. And you could actually see in this one, the blow by this one had, it was just terrible. I think it was this, it had all types of water in there. This thing was just oozing. Um, I can't get it off, I don't wanna break it, but yeah, it had plenty, this thing's got plenty of blow by. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure the oil pla passages are all clogged up on this one. They did the uh, 
the actuators are new. She had it at another shop. They changed the actuators to take care of an exhaust, a P00, uh, zero, zero, I think 1417, whatever it was. But this thing is still running terrible. No power. So I'll decide. I, I think our best bet is to rebuild this one. This one was at 60000 when the customer opted not to rebuild it. But I think we should just go ahead, pull the head off, maybe do the head work, see if the valves are any good. As long as the pistons aren't damaged, hey, throw a new chain on it, get compression back in this thing, and uh, get it all prepped up to fit in here. It's a newer motor. motor's two or three years newer. I believe it'll work. I believe nothing's really changed. Um, but we'll see. You guys wanted to see me do a build, and I mean, this is what I got. Customer declined it. I wanted to buy the car, kind of step through it. While we're rebuilding the motor, I'll show you guys any tips and tricks I may know or do as we're rebuilding this sucker. I mean, it's nothing special. It's not like it's an LS motor or anything like that, but it is GM. And I believe most of the other stuff on this motor was pretty good. So I think that's what we're going to do. I mean, for a $100 core, instead of buying a crate motor or another used motor for 100 bucks, I could just flip this out, throw another 500 into it, whatever it is, and then pop it in this bad boy. I'll have under a grand in this thing. Tires are looking good for the most part. Back ones are probably in better shape. It's been sitting outside for a few weeks waiting to hear back from the customer. But that's it, guys. We're going to do an Equinox build, another one. And I'll probably, I'll probably drop the cradle on this one, too, to get the motor out. I like doing it that way. It's, uh, it's actually less of a hassle. And then you less of a hassle scratching up the bumper and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, then coming out from the top. That way you don't have to pull the intake and exhaust off. You know, I could leave that one on that motor and then just leave this one com completed and just pull it off, separate it from the trans. So, interior. It's got the nice two-tone seats. This interior definitely needs to be cleaned out. I don't know when I get these cars. They're always, they're always terrible looking. Look like people you living in these things, you know. No offense to my customers, but, you know, they could do better. They could keep their cars cleaner. So, so that's it, guys. That's going to be the build I got. We're going to do, uh, we're going to do rebuild the Ecotech motor. You guys are asking for more of hands-on or engine rebuild work. I mean, this is what I got. You know, this is what I got to work with um, until we find something cool. Maybe do a race car or get that uh, Honda I've been eyeballing. Um, do a turbo build on that one or something in the future. But got the title for it. Another one, another one in my arsenal of cars that I don't have time to work on, but I'm going to make this one a project for you guys. We're going to run through this one, and uh, I think it'll be pretty cool. We'll do a couple videos on it or something like that. First break down the motor, all that stuff, and then get it prepped, check compression on it, all that good stuff, and, uh, you know, or the cylinder leak down, whatever we got to do. Make sure it's good. Make sure the valves are good. Maybe we'll send out the head. We'll, we'll see how we do it. Maybe we'll do everything in-house. But just a quick one, guys. Catch you guys up what I've been up to, what's going on around the shop. Don't forget to tune in to, uh, tomorrow live. Me and the Rust Belt mechanic. He's heading out. Probably be uh, probably hit, be hitting uh, hitting the area around maybe 10 or 11 o'clock tomorrow. And uh, it should be pretty cool. We got some pretty cool stuff coming you guys' way. So make sure you guys stay tuned. As always, like, comment, subscribe to my channel if you haven't. We will catch you in the next one. Signing out.